If you love seed beading but sometimes want to try something more organic or freeform, I have got a great technique for you. Hey there, Sandy here with another creative tutorial from KeepsakeCrafts.net. What I love about this project is that you can use really any beads. Here I have Czech fire polish and some mini daggers and some 11 seed beads. You can make these any proportion you want. Mine are delicate with seed beads, but you could skip the seed beads. What about instead using Czech fire polish? In place of these little itty bitty seed beads, of course you'd need larger beads at the ends to keep it all in proportion. For my first example, I'm going to show you how to make a pair of earrings. For this earring, around 12 inches will be plenty. When you're cutting thread for your project, do sort of overestimate because it's kind of a pain to add thread to this design. It's much better to have more than you need. You'll need a beading needle that will work with the smallest size beads that you have. The first thing I'm going to do is put on a stopper bead. It's recommended when you do stopper beads that you put on something totally different from the ones you're using so that it doesn't accidentally get incorporated in your project. So I'm going to just do this. And I'm leaving a bit of a tail here. It's a good idea to have an idea when you get started of just how long you want your longest branch to be. You can change your mind and make it longer. So I'm going to start here and add just a few of my smaller beads, my 11 seed beads, like maybe five. And I'm going to throw on a check fire polish, which would be, here's those beads and here's the check fire polish. This earring design is pretty consistent in the pattern. It's, it's got a pattern to it and not just totally free form, but you can do it however you like. And I'm not worried about making these exactly the same length, but I do kind of want them to sort of match. So let's see, one, two, three, thirteen. Okay, basically you add beads until you get to the longest length that you want in your piece. Like I said, that you can go back and make it longer if you want. That looks good. You can make your stop however you want to do it. What I did on all of these was I had a check fire polish, a seed bead, and then my dagger. And I did a little testing on this. There are a few different ways to do it. For example, if you have a top drilled bead like one of these, you could actually have a loop of beads around this rather than it just terminating in a single bead. Here's a spike bead and you can see there's quite a few beads going in and out. And then the same with this dagger. I've got a number of beads, so it's like a loop of beads going through the dagger bead. It'll depend on the size and shape of your beads, especially if you're using a dagger bead, something with some thickness to it, you're probably going to have to do this. Now these would be sweet. I was wishing I had more of these to use. But let me show you how this would work if I was going to use these. I would go through my bead that I want to be the bottom bead, but then you have to go through one more. That's a stopper that's going to hold everything in place. And then you go back up through, not that last bead, but everything else, or as much else as you want. This is how fringe is made. If you wanted to make this into just a single strand of fringe, I'd simply go back up through all of these. But I'm going to go back up through, yeah, like three. And that's how you add a bead that isn't a top drilled bead. It can be just a plain round bead. It could be uh, one of these fire polish or maybe something like these little hearts. You could make a little pico down here by going through three beads. So there's one and two more back up through my heart. And now when you pull on that, you have just a little pico design. Okay, I've got my needle re-threaded, so let's go ahead and proceed with these little dagger beads. So, I'm going to do a check fire polish, a seed bead, and then a dagger bead. 
and as before you go back up through everything but the last one you put on. So back through the seed bead, the check fire polish, and in this case I'm going to go back up through three of the seed beads. You go back up to the point where you want your next branch to be. So in this case I'm going up three. And the trick for getting this snugged up in wh whatever beads you're using is to hold on to that last one that's at the end of the loop and pull. You don't have to pull real tight because if you pull too tight what happens is your, your branches don't dangle gracefully. But just pull it up so that there isn't any excess thread. Now you can add any beads you want. What I did and what I meant by being very consistent and having a pattern was I added on every branch three seed beads, check fire polish seed bead dagger, and I skipped up, after this first one, I skipped up two seed beads between each, most <laughs> of the branches. And that's what I mean, that you can do this very regimented and with a very strict pattern, or you can do it quite loose. Now if at this point, or really any point, I decide, you know what, I think that's too short. I want this to be longer. Well, can you even tell which one of these is my first? But I could have made any one of these longer. You just add more seed beads on your branch. You know, a few more seed beads and another check fire polish. I could make this branch as long as I want it to be. Come branching off the branches if I wanted. See what I be mean? And now suddenly this one's going to be the longest one. I'm going to stick with my original plan and show you how to make these. I'm just showing you that you can really freeform this as much as you want. Do try to be careful that you don't split your thread because if you split your thread it really is very difficult to get it tightened up. It's difficult to keep everything in place. You can usually feel that when you're stitching. You'll just feel your needle go through the thread in which case you want to back out, try again. Make sure that you have a fine enough needle for your beads so that you can get past the thread that's in there. So I'm going to go back up through the beads on this branch. Now I don't have to. You can branch out from branches. I could stop here or anywhere along here, pull it up snug and make another branch. You could, you can actually get really lost in this <laughs> if you don't pay attention. Maybe you don't want to. And at this point where they're branching back together, I don't want to go like up here because then I'll have a bit of thread showing. So do go back in through the next bead and work your way. You could, I could work my way back down and make another branch over here, anywhere you want. In this case, I'm going to go up two seed beads. Hey there, Sandy here, interrupting your video for just a sec to bring you some full disclosure. This video was originally created a couple of years ago for my patrons. If you like my YouTube videos, I encourage you to check out my Patreon page. As a patron, not only do you have the satisfaction of knowing you're keeping these YouTube videos coming for everyone, but you also get bonus videos, the chance to vote on the topics for new videos, sneak peeks, behind the scenes. And if you're already a patron, thank you. You are the reason I stay inspired and creating. Now let's get back to our project. I'm going to hold on to that end bead, the dagger, and pull. And that just brings it all nice and snug. And then I'm going to repeat. Don't have to repeat. can do something entirely different. Uh, are you getting my point here? No rules, right? You, can, you don't want thread to show. You want your tension to be nice and even. You want your dangles to drape gracefully. So there, I guess there are some rules, but as far as the design goes, do whatever you want within that. So I'm just going back up along my main branch here. I'm going up two beads, make sure I'm in the right spot. So I don't leave thread showing until I get all the way back to where I started. Again, at any point, you can reverse, go back down, say, oh, I think I want another one here. I could come back down and do more in between these. You're not done until you've decided you're done. 
So what kinds of things can you do with this technique? It's not a bad idea before you put many hours into a piece to actually test out the colors. Making a couple pairs of earrings is, or a single one can be a pendant. You can make whole entire branches of these and have a really gorgeous necklace. You could also, this would be a really pretty bracelet. I might make the dangles a little shorter, I might not. Wouldn't this be gorgeous though as fringe on a really custom home deck pillow or on garments? A whole bunch of these together would make an absolutely amazing tassel. If you do bead weaving of any sort, instead of straight fringe, maybe have branchy fringe. You can also do something like this, pretty much the same thing on a very fine wire and then you could shape it. You could make napkin rings because you could form it and shape them. You could make candle rings, decorate the edges of lampshades. It looks like I may have started with one less seed bead on this branch. I'm not worried about that. If you want to look at my ears and count <laughs> the number of seed beads, well, more power to you. I would love to hear your ideas for using these. How else would you use them? I sculpt in polymer clay. I can think of ways of using these to dangle on polymer clay pieces. It's just one of those techniques that's really nice to have in your back pocket that whenever you want to do something a little bit extraordinary with seed beads and add a bit of extra extra. You know how to do it. Done my last branch and I've added two more beads on this end. I'm just going to pull off the stopper bead. Don't need that anymore. I'm going to thread my needle with this thread and put it through one more bead. And I'm putting it through just this last the second to last one and not the last one because I'm going to make a knot here and I want that last seed bead to be trapped in the knot. I'm just going to do a simple right over and left, and left over right. And now I'm going to add a bit of glue. In this case I like to use super new glue. It's a super glue, cyanoacrylate glue, but it's runny and I like that for this. Often when I'm doing sculptural work I don't want my glue to be runny because then it just makes a mess. But in this case I want this glue to run into that bead and along that thread and to really coat that whole thing so that it's very very secure. So just a drop or so, you don't have to go crazy, but do make sure all that thread in that area is really well coated. I'm just going to place it on a piece of plastic here to dry completely because I don't want it to, I don't want to get glue on my fabric surface here. So we'll go to this one which actually is dried. So this has had time to dry and now I'm going to trim that thread. You can leave a tiny bit of the thread, you don't have to trim it right on it. And this is where you'll want your clamshell. So this is what's going to hold it all together. You just squeeze it closed. The final step is to grab your earring finding, open up the loop, pop in that little loop that's up there. And because of the way this is folded, when you put it on here, it's going to keep it closed. You can, if you want, add a drop of super glue in there and that will make it extremely secure. I love the organic feel to them. Let's look at some other possibilities. Here's another example of what you can do with this technique. I made this necklace years ago when I didn't know what I was doing about the finishing and it's been actually languishing in my need to be repaired drawer for a long time. I need to redo it. You can see that I've always loved this kind of a design, these branchy things. Many of these are just very simple what I just showed you branching off from a main stem. You can see a lot of them have the little three bead pico. This one has a five bead pico. Every so often there's one that branches out like this and this is done the exact same way I just showed you only I have leaves on the ends and they're spaced much closer together so you've got this cluster. Teardrop beads 
pretty much the same thing. Anything goes. Any beads you want, you can use in this. Now that you've learned this technique, you'll want to check out the rest of the videos in the Easy Seed Beading